Hello, thank you for joining us again for another highlight on a black business owner here in the Boot Hill. This is a part of our Black History Month series. My name is Mary Ann Wright and I'm a 4-H area educator with Lincoln University Cooperative Extension and this is my co-worker Don Jordan. <laughs> Today's interview is going to be led by Travion Russell. Hi, my name is Travion Russell. I'm a senior at Kennett High School in Kennett, Missouri. And I'm here interviewing Ms. Gwendolyn Johnson and her husband, Roland Johnson. And we want to thank you all for joining us. So why don't you start by telling us about yourself and about your business. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn Johnson, a native of Haytai Heights, Missouri. Uh, we own Gwendolyn's Kitchen here in Kennett, Missouri. And we've had our business for 20 years. We're known for our cheese balls, our famous cheese balls. We want to thank Lincoln University for allowing our business to be highlighted during the month of February. Uh, Lincoln University is the alma mater of my youngest uh, brother, Jeffrey T. Newman, who graduated there with his bachelor's and his master's degree. So it, I feel like it's an honor and a privilege to have this opportunity with Lincoln University. As was said, this is my husband, Roland Johnson. What fueled your desire to start your own business? Well, it was not exactly a desire to start a business. It started as a home-based hobby. And I was just um, doing goodies on the side and I would give them to my neighbors and different ones. But I would have to say that all of this started long time ago in my grandmother's kitchen in Haytai Heights, Missouri on Braggadocia Road. And I love when everybody, my grandmother had 15 children. So it was a lot of people always around and at the holidays, I just love to be in the kitchen when all my aunts and my grandmother were making all these cakes and pies and all this food. And I would be in there standing up on the chair asking way too many questions. And over the years, I just started uh, evolving and doing the little things that I like to do. So were you involved in any school or community groups? Well, you know, I, I think someone asked me once about um, organizational skills. So when I was in school, uh, I learned to always just apply myself. I didn't know that things like in math, reading, all these different things would come into play when I got ready to do my business, knowing how to do the different math and different things to do your book work and all this stuff and how to figure out how to price your product and all those things. So if you're applying yourself in school, then those things will come into play later on in your life. You don't even realize, I didn't even realize, but I was, I was also the track manager when I was in school. Um, our uh, female coach, she had to coach everything. So she needed someone who could be responsible to help the track team. And I was pretty much like their coach. And uh, I organized everything. I kept them on track. I trained them. I did everything that was needed to keep that program afloat. Otherwise, we wouldn't have it. And so I thought, I said, hmm, well, I never knew all them organizational skills would come in handy <laughs> on down the road, but they did. They did, just, just being so organized and learning how to uh, take that responsibility and move forward with it. It came into play with Gwendolyn's Kitchen. What factors confirmed that you could be a business owner? Well, I tell you, we uh, didn't do a lot of advertising early on. It was all word of mouth. And when the people just loved what we were doing and just wanted it and were excited about it and everything, I thought, you know, we might can do this because the people, it was the demand for it. And we weren't advertising, but you know, the orders were coming in and everything. And I would say that we didn't just go into business. We had did it out of the home for several years and kind of bootlegging, I guess you'd say. But, and then we had developed a customer base. So I felt like our customers wanted it and let's just go ahead. We've got a, a lot of orders and felt like we could go ahead and step out on it. Yeah. What are some of the biggest obstacles that you faced? Well, I think some of the biggest obstacles was uh, starting a business without having that foundation 
of a, mm -hmm. wow. a business plan and a business development that's available. Those resources are available now to many people. And I, I would say take advantage of those. Do you see any advantages in being a black owned business? Well, yes, I do in a way because we, I, I would say our customer uh, base is very diverse and we're proud of that. We serve, it's been a labor of love and we, I call it a service because we don't get rich, but we provide a service and people just enjoy it. But I will say one of the advantages of being a black owned business is you can be certified through the state of Missouri as a woman or a minority owned business. And once you're certified, that opens the door for you, for some of these corporations for their diverse supplier, supplier program. They have a diversity supplier program that allows contracts for minorities and women owned businesses so they can succeed. And that is how we were in Walmart. We had two Walmarts that we supplied to Kennett and Paragool. And we were able to secure that. It took a lot of work to get into Walmart, I will say. And we worked on that project about five years, you know, with all the requirements to get in there. But because we were a supply, uh, a diverse <clears throat> corporation, then we were able to secure a contract with them because we were certified through the state of Missouri as a woman and minority owned business. So that is one great advantage. And if you are um, thinking of going into business, I would say get that certification. You know, I also um, was a member of Agra Missouri. And uh, so I learned about that, took advantage of being uh, in their program. And when they had extra money, they did um, matching grants where you paid half, they paid half. And that is how we got our labels that we used to put our barcode on and everything to be in Walmart. And at the time they gave us 10,000 labels and I thought, oh my God, we'll have these forever. We'll never use all those labels. But I would say in the next year or so, we will have sold almost 10,000 cheese balls because I'm gonna run out of labels. But um, yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to young people who want to become a business owner? I would say uh, take advantage of all the resources available to you. I would say apply yourself in school, get a great education because some of the things you think, I won't need this and why we have to learn algebra and why we got to learn and all this, they will come in handy later. Uh, is there anything else that you would like, like to tell us about your business? Well, I like to uh, do this timeline, so to speak, from where we started. And, and this is when we first had our ribbon cutting ceremony in November 13, 2000. And as you see the headlines say that uh, we were a home-based business. And then next thing you know, I think it was seven years. And then the next thing you know, I was like, oh my gosh. They, they said they wanted to interview me and I thought, okay, that's fine. And so, well, let's take a picture of you. Next thing I know, the paper comes out and I'm on the front cover. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know I was gonna be on the front cover. <laughs> but, and then they, they did a feature article on us cooking up Christmas. And, um, and then the next thing I know, I think this is the, t this is the 10 year, we were celebrating 10 years. And then the highlight of all this is this past November 13th, we celebrated 20 years in business. I can't believe it. I mean, I just, I don't know, where did the time go? And um, I cried, I did a lot of reminiscing. And, and I will say too, even though it says Gwendolyn's Kitchen, I used to love to give the treats out from home and I would say, uh, with love from Gwendolyn's Kitchen. So when we decided to go in there, that's what we decided to name it. But it is family owned and operated. This is the business manager. Any decision that's made, and, and they said, well, why don't you do that? I said, well, my business manager said, that's not a good idea. That's who made the decision. <laughs> so, so honey, would you like to have some, some words to yeah, say? I won't be just short and sweet. Um, okay. What really uh, drives the business is Gwendolyn. I don't think it's the product. It, although it's an excellent product and the people seem to love it, it's been uh, 
all over the United States, even out of the country, we, products have been taken to other places. But it seemed to me that the customers just thrive on wanting to see Gwendolyn and talk to Gwendolyn, rob her brain about just life in general, not just the product, and then see her enthusiasm year after year. She always says, we're going to go again. And I, it's just like a kid in a candy store at Christmas time. I see the excitement on her, on her face, and I'm like, yes, we're going. And until that time changes, I, I guess we'll still be going. Now we're going to head to Gwendolyn's Kitchen. Hello. Welcome to Gwendolyn's Kitchen. Treats and sweets. And this is where all the magic happens. And so, as you can see, it was small. And you can see that uh, with COVID going on, it, we had to make some adjustments. But uh, this is where we've been for the last 20 years. And it's been, a, 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 like I said, a labor of love. It's like our second home. And um, we don't give tours of the kitchen. So I'm sorry about that, but I'm not sorry. But we don't do tours of the kitchen. But this is where a lot of our uh, products are when customers come in so they can see them in our big refrigerators here. And I have some of our products here. Uh, this is what our cheese ball is packaged in. As you can see, that's a pretty nice size ball. And uh, we don't have those available for today. But this is our upper crust brownie, formerly known as the Neiman Marcus brownie. Has a butter pecan crust with the cream cheese and sweet buttery filling sprinkled with pecans. And this is how our, these are actual casseroles. I do have had these available. This is our large and this is our small. And this is the chicken and wild rice casserole. This is actually the ribbon that was cut 20 years ago for our grand opening. I can't believe I still got it and it looks really good too. But we've been having that November 13, 2000. And that's what our menu looks like. Everything that we sell is not on there. There's some things that we provide, customers know we do them. And so they'll call and say, have you got such and such or whatever? And yes, we do. We're gonna do those Christmas week or Thanksgiving week or whatever. And that's what we do. These are some pictures from when we first started. Some of the things that we used to do, uh, the pecan tassies, the cheese ball and the high roller tray and the ham roll ups. and. Just different things that we did down through the years, the packaging, but, uh, and so that was a long time ago before I had good camp. So, uh, but those are some of the things that we used to do uh, many, many years ago, and and the packaging. And when we started mass producing, we had to cut some of those things out because we were just mass producing way too many cheese balls to stop and make pecan tassies, and so that. So that is some of the things that we do. And while I'm at it, this is our date stamper. We had our product, our cheese ball, tested at the University of Missouri Food Science Program to try to determine a shelf life. And so that's why we have a best, a best buy date on here. It's not that it's throwawayable, but we want you to have the best flavor by that date. So we try to date them so that you can have a, a, a great product. And I want to say that we love, I love, customer appreciation. So when we were doing the 20-year anniversary this year in COVID, in COVID, we was like, how are we going to appreciate our customers? One of the things was just to try to get the service going. We said we were going to do scale back. That didn't happen because people were at home watching movies and just enjoy. And they wanted, they wanted these products. So they worked this young lady this year. But one thing we did, we did the curbside pickup. We never did that before. So we had a date for just Christmas orders to do curbside pickup. We had a blast. So that may be something that we'll keep doing in the future. And also we decided that um, we would collaborate again with Sweet Mayhem. And we provided our product there for convenience. Cause as you can see, this is very small and um, and since we're off season, we usually have it decorated just very, very beautiful. So we did put some of the decorations back, you know, but um, it, it's so small. So we had to close our lobby for COVID 
and we did the curbside pickup and we put them at Sweet Mayhem. But this is where the magic happened. This is Gwendolyn's Kitchen, 624 1st Street, Kenton, Missouri. We want to thank you all for talking with us today. I enjoy getting to interview you all. It's been my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln University. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. This is one of an eight-part series featuring Black-owned businesses in the Boot Hill. Be sure to visit the Pemiscot County 4-H Facebook page and the Boot Hill 4-H YouTube channel for additional videos and more information about 4-H.